Hey everyone, Cynix here. Welcome to Paint Over Pals, my critique series where we get to look at the art of some of my patrons and see if we can make some improvements or suggestions. As always, I strongly encourage you to critique along at home. Giving good critiques is one of the best ways to improve your own art. I'm going to try something different for this episode, and instead of showing you the paint over process, I will be focusing on giving a red line critique and then showing you the finished paint over. I know that might not sound as fun, but we'll see how well it works, and you can let me know which method you prefer. Alright, let's just get into it. The first painting I have for you guys is by Artie, and it looks like this guy has been out in the sun way too long. That is quite a sunburn and quite a tan line while we're at it. Um, but the first thing I like to look for and a lot of times when I see portraits is the hairline. Obviously this one, it's, it's way too strong. You need to soften it up by bringing in some ambient occlusion, a little bit more saturation as well, and just kind of blending that in a little bit more. The next thing I'd like to mention, I think, is the hair. You can see how you got these white highlights. We always want to avoid highlights that go too close toward white. We want to bring in some saturation, some actual color, because that's what light creates. It doesn't just create white, especially on a surface that isn't naturally white. So let's just say avoid white tones there. I guess I don't have to write everything out. The next thing I'll say is we do want the clothing and all this stuff to stand out from the background. Right now, it's basically just the exact same tone as the background. Uh, so if we can darken that all up or just change it a bit, that would definitely improve this whole image. And let's see, aside from that, I do like the overall painterly feel to things. There's some anatomy issues we can shore up a little bit. Uh, the nose it feels a little off, the lump of it feels a little low. The chin definitely feels a bit weak, we can bring that out a bit. The ear is definitely also a bit weak, so we can improve that and include some neck anatomy. We want to see those forms and really feel them. So aside from that, the eyes are definitely too bright. You can see here that there's like a whiteness in the eyes and we generally like to have that a lot more subtle and a lot less bright. So we can just darken up the eyes a little bit, bring them closer to a mid-tone. And I think if we do all of that, we should be good. And there we go, here is the finished paint over. I didn't go overboard with the rendering or anything, but hopefully you can see how much those minor changes improve the overall look of things, especially just making the clothing and everything stand out from the background a little bit. This next image is by Demi Lay. Let me just write that out real fast. And it looks like this one's pretty polished and finished. It's got these nice sunflowers, all kinds of effects going on. But I think there are a few things we actually can improve upon. One of them, especially being the hair, you can see how they did a lot of just thin strands. I don't know if it'll show up at this resolution, but when you zoom in, you can tell it's just thin strands everywhere. So we wanna try to chunk those things together, make it all feel blockier, and really focus on the different chunks of value and color. The skin also feels pretty flat, so we can try to bring in some different highlights in different areas just to make it feel a bit more three-dimensional, as well as including a little bit of rim lighting around the outside edges of forms, maybe some on the fingers, just anywhere we feel like we can bring in some subsurface scattering or rim light. Once again, I think it would be a good idea to try to pop down the brightness of those eyes. You guys keep going super strong white with the whites of the eyes. The glasses as well could use a little just pop of specularity on them. They're very flat as they are now. And let's see what else. The, the clothing folds. I'm not a big fan of it going towards such a dark tone. I feel like that's a bit Dodge and Bernie, which we want to avoid. And let's see, lastly, I think she's actually missing an arm here. Well, that might help a little bit, but overall, I think if we do those minor changes, it will be a nice improvement. And here's the finished result. I think we could probably go back in and try to get rid of some of the white highlights in the background and things like that. But as far as the character itself goes, I think these minor improvements have really turned it around in a strong way especially in the eyes. You can see how that added darkness in the eyes has really made it look a lot more realistic. Our next image is a painting by Marcos. I'll just write that out. And this guy, it reminds me of something. I wanna say Grappler Baki. I don't know, only true anime nerds are gonna know what I'm talking about, but that's what this looks like to me. 
Now the main problem I'm seeing is just a lot of chaos. There's a lot of brush strokes that aren't quite touching and they're crossing over each other in all kinds of complex ways. And it's just creating a, a lack of confidence for the viewer. So we always wanna pool things together as much as we can. Big shapes of color and value. In this case, just value. So we can simplify and smooth those big chunks out, especially on things like the hair, if we can just make some bigger, bolder chunks, get rid of all these thin lines once again. We never wanna put in thin lines everywhere on the hair. We can then use a couple little tufts of hair to stand out from the background, maybe with a little bit of rim lighting or something just to make it pop. Because there won't be a lot of contrast going on in the hair itself, but you can bring in rim lights and things to add more visual interest. The form planes around the eye can also be simplified a lot. There's a, there's a lot of little bits of chaos going on in there, so we can just simplify them into bigger shapes and uh, smooth some of those things out. And also the eye itself, we can make the eyeball look a little bit more like a sphere. So just subtle spherical form shadows. And great, it looks like I've made that character from Avatar. Uh, but anyway, always spend your most visual concentration on the eye areas because that's where people are going to be looking to first and it's really where you should put all of your detail, if anything. Let's go on and jump ahead. Here is the paint over and you can see I didn't do the whole thing. I got a bit lazy because it was all just very repetitive and I didn't just want to paint the whole thing over again. Uh, but on the right side, our right, you can see how much difference it changed in the eye when we just simplified the planes and made it a little bit more form responsible. The hair, in my opinion, also looks a lot more appealing and finished, even though it's very rough. Just having subtle gradations and using big chunks of shapes really makes it look a lot better. All right, here is a fairly polished painting by Mocha. And it's got a couple characters here, a little bit of dynamic between them and some little storytelling elements. There are a lot of good qualities going on, but there's definitely still some things we can critique. The first thing I'll say is very optional, but personally, I like it better if there's a little bit of highlights on the sternum area. And then you can just bring the boobs up a little, maybe like if they were pushed up. You don't have to. Um, but at the very least, I like a little bit of highlight up here. I think it looks more fun and interesting. Most of the things I'm going to talk about are related to anatomy. So the hands can definitely use a little bit more form in things like the knuckles. Um, these hands also, um, just things like the shoulders and different little areas that just feel like they're lacking form. They feel too smoothed out. It feels like they've turned into just taffy or something. The hair part at the top of her head is just weirdly off-centered. It's slightly off-centered, and that makes me feel like it's not on purpose when it's so slightly off-centered. Um, but that's fine. I won't worry too much about that. I feel like this brightness on the eyes makes it look like she has really heavy bags above her eyes, and that's kind of making her feel a bit weird and droopy in my brain. Overall, a lot of the main issues are going to come from this girl over here. She's got a lot of issues with the shape of her face. She, her chin is just so diminished and her neck goes, I don't know, it looks like it goes out the back of her body. Um, so if we can just bring the neck down a little bit more, try to make all those forms match up and just improve the overall structure of her face, I think that will go the longest way in actually making this look better. The top of her head also feels a bit large, so maybe we can shrink that down a little bit. And I think with all of those changes, it should help a lot. Here are the results, and I definitely like the improvement. Just things like the hand and adding a little bit more anatomy on shoulders and stuff really helps, but that girl's face is the biggest change, and I think it helps the overall image a good amount, as well as the eyes on this character. Also, I did give her a push-up bra. Hey. Okay, the next painting is by Brian. And man, Brian, it looks like you just started this painting. There's not a whole lot going on here. Um, but this compositional thing, oh, that, that's, a, that's not a good composition. We got just a round shape, and this guy is completely in the darkness of this shape. And it doesn't quite stand out as well as I would hope. So maybe we can fix that, bring the background. I don't know what it, if it's important what the background is. But if it is, let's just bring it down so this guy is at least crossing into a little bit more brightness. Uh, maybe we can still add some castle-y looking towers and stuff. Um, and I think this whole 
side this this lady we can use a little bit more shadow and darkness over there and maybe we can bring in some additional storytelling element because right now it's basically just going back and forth between these two characters and there's no real other thing for us to look at so maybe we can bring in some people or a crowd of people or if not that maybe we can bring in something like a, a dragon because this kind of reminds me of skyrim or something or game of thrones uh, so we'll just bring in a dragon up there and that'll fix everything. We'll have some kind of triangular composition. Uh, the other thing that I want to mention is try to avoid everything being in the same cool family. You do have worms over here, which is great. So maybe we can try to find a way to bring some of those worms over onto his face or just, you know, punch them up in a couple other areas. And here is the after image. Of course, I'm not going to go through and render it all out when it's at such a starting stage, but Hopefully this is just some guide on how to improve things just a bit if you want to keep that same composition. Otherwise, I would recommend just thumbnailing some new ideas and new compositions, but you can probably make this work if you needed to. This next image is a really strong looking piece by Palum. I hope I'm saying that one right. Um, and this looks like it can be a potential Magic the Gathering type card art. Um, there, it's not quite as polished and finished as it could be, and there's some things we can help him touch up, at least guide him in the right direction. Of course, you know what I hate most in art, and that is tangents. So look at the way this skirt thing just flows right into this, this background, and this hand just feels like it's so close to touching all that stuff. So if we can get rid of those tangents, I'll be a lot happier. Um, other things of note, there's definitely some weakness going on in the face. And I feel like the actual dynamicism of the angle, it feels a bit weak compared to his pose. So maybe we can actually rotate the whole thing. Let's just, let's just, I don't know how to illustrate that with little things. Let's just rotate the whole thing a little bit. Turn it around, just, just a tad. That might make it feel a little bit more dynamic. I'll try to lessen up a couple things in the background. These, these banners over here feel a little bit dark. Uh, we could bring in a couple more details on the rocks and things in the foreground. And uh, maybe punch up some of these colors. So we have some nice blue tones. So we can bring more of those in. And I think if we can bring in some brightness in the background, that would actually possibly look good too. It's feeling a bit too safe in everywhere. So maybe some bright spots in the background will really help it pop. And one last thing, I also feel like we need a little bit more saturation or color somewhere. So we can bring in, it looks like there's a little bit of red here, so we can just punch that up. Maybe that'll look more fun, because right now it's it's playing it very safe, and there's not really a punch of color to get our interest up. And here's the paint over. I think rotating it a little bit might have helped. It's I guess that's optional. Some people might like it better, some people might not. I think it adds to a greater sense of dynamicism, or dynamism, I should say. I like to say dynamicism. Uh, but because his pose feels so dynamic, we want the angle and everything else to feel just as dramatic. It's a really good image, and hopefully these critiques can give you some ideas on how to take it even farther. Next, I have a painting by We Do 3 I guess that's kind of a strange name, but we have some kind of, I don't know, princess queen looking girls, kind of like the Queen of Hearts, something like that. Anyway, the main issue I'm seeing is just the stiffness of it all. It feels like the shoulders are just blocking straight across, the arms straight up and down. There's not a whole lot of form going on anywhere. So if we can maybe just angle the whole body in a little bit of way, I'm not going to go through and repaint it, but I think in Photoshop we can just kind of angle things, move the shifting of the weight around so the shoulders are tilted against the hips, a little bit of contrapasta that might feel a lot more natural and lifelike. I think we can also shrink this hand or maybe just this arm part just a little bit. And for the face, we definitely need to lessen this jaw. Her whole face feels like it's just jumping really far out ahead. So I feel like if we bring back the jaw just a bit, it might look a little bit more realistic. And let's see, what else? Oh yes, the eyes. You guys love your bright eyes, but I'm gonna bring them back to the realm of darkness. So I'll just punch the eyes back a little bit darker, and that should make it all look better in the end. Here is the finished paint over, and see, I think that actually looks a lot better with the slightly tilted shoulders and body. Feels like she's a little bit more natural. 
and bringing back the face and the eyes just a little bit certainly helped things out. I also tried to bump up the ambient occlusion under the crown and in little nooks and crannies like that. The last painting I have for you guys today is this Good Boy by Zaff, and uh, it's overall it's a pretty nice image. I think we can bump up some of the uh, ambient occlusion in different spots, really punch in those shadows, as well as trying to bring some different tones to these shadows and the branches and everything. You're just using a slightly darker green, and I think if we brought in a slightly different tone, maybe a more brownish tone, that would look a lot better. You did a pretty good job with the fur. Just try to watch out for some of those thin little lines, unless they're like whiskers or something. Um, but focus on the big chunks and try to, try to incorporate that, even in the sub areas, such as the breaks between light and shadow. Focus on keeping everything nice and smooth and chunky and really getting those confident shapes. I think for this owl guy, we could bring in a little bit of specularity, maybe just brighter highlights and more shadow on one side to make him look extra round. Right now, he feels a little bit flat throughout. But you know what else is really going to make the fur look a lot softer? Is when you bring in a texture next to it that feels a lot different. So for something like the nose, we can actually bring in a lot of speculars because we want him to have a healthy wet nose and maybe increase the speculars on the eyes as well. Well, that's kind of scary. Now he just looks sick. And this guy looks like a Boy Scout. Um, but nonetheless, if we bring in that specularity, I think it will look a lot better. I'm just going to write specularity so I don't feel like a horrible person for giving the dog demon eyes. All right, let's see what we can do. Here is the result. And you can see how just adding that little bit of touch to the nose as well as some stronger ambient occlusion and shadow colors really helped things out. It just punches it up just a little bit more. It's like that 5% extra that makes a pretty big difference when you quickly look at it. Especially those eyes and the nose and the little shapes, the form shadows, I should say, around the owl. I even gave him some extra hints of whiskers around his muzzle just to keep the attention and detail all drawn into the face. Detailing some of the flowers could also be a nice way to improve the overall detail level of the whole piece. You don't gotta go through and do them all, but maybe just do a few of them and that will make them all look a little more finished. All right, well, I think that's all I got for this episode. I know there was a lot less to actually watch, but hopefully the notes made the changes more understandable. I don't know, I'm sure you guys will want me to go back to the old way. But regardless, thank you all so much for watching. Also, a big thank you to the Jetty Jet Show for helping me finish this video. And as always, a huge thank you to my Patreons for not only submitting art, but also supporting this channel. You guys are amazing. Now stop making your eyes so bright.